Hello guys, uh, welcome to Real Reviews Live. I'm Chase Lee. I'm here to review Divine Access. This is another selection from the Dallas International Film Festival that I'm covering for the next uh, 10, 11 days. <laughs> and um, I'm doing this live, so if you have any questions about the movie, uh, comment on the place where I'll my face and let me know. Uh, and if not, that's okay. That's 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 okay. I'll just give you my review. So this is my sixth movie at the festival, and uh, let's dive right into it. So uh, I do this for every single Dallas International Film Festival uh, movie. I give you the description right from the uh, bio here. And this is a uh, film made in uh, the U.S. I, I have to I have to state that because I I see like uh, – it's split off into three categories at the film festival. You either see a U.S. movie, you see a foreign film, or you see a documentary. Those are the types. So uh, this is from the U.S. Jack Harriman, played by Billy Burke, has seen it all. Keenly aware of Jack's penchant for discrediting religious zealots, his friend Bob McCorb, played by Patrick Warburton, invites, invites him to join a cable access television show. After humiliating the current host of the show, Reverend Guy Roy Davis, played by Gary Cole, Jack's popularity turns into a spiritual celebrity, and he takes down the road of a multi-city uh, speaking tour that ultimately leads Jack to just some surprising uh, spiritual discoveries of his own. It is directed and co-written by Stephen Chester Prince, which sounds like a really uh, high-class golf player, so good job, sir. Uh, <laughs> I'll put this down. Uh the producer and the director and some of the stars were there last night, and he seemed like a pretty cool guy. I'm just, I'm kidding. I, I like your movie, so, uh, but your name, it sounds like high royalty, so at least you have that going for you. So, uh, this movie, like I said, stars Billy Burke, and he's kind of like this very shallow, hollow person, and, you know, he sleeps with a bunch of chicks, and he's kind of, he's kind of a prick, and, you know, he drinks a lot and whatnot, and his mother, like, he, when he was growing up, his mother was, uh, uh, super religious, and she, and like in the beginning, you see them like in kind of like a Native American tribe and stuff, and like she's really like kind of spiritual and like all over the place and stuff. And he's really not, and he just kind of wants uh, to discover life and stuff. You know, as a boy, like you know, he is interested in girls, and so when he's older, you know, he's banging a bunch of broads, uh, to put it lightly. And so, like I said, he. He's like, in a, uh, I think it was a construction worker or something like that. It's something like that. But he does like minimal work and like <laughs> he smokes and drinks all day. Like he's a hollow person and it feels like, you know, he's not really going anywhere in real life. So his friend, uh, played by Patrick Warburton, uh, comes up to him and says, hey, you should be on my uh, cable access television show. And it's called Divine Access and it's basically a religious show. And we, we've all seen those. And so... Uh, Billy Burke's character is like, ah, no, I, I really don't want to. So he go, uh, he's he's convinced otherwise, and so he goes on set. And uh, the current host of the television show, played by Gary Cole, which is Reverend Guy Roy Ross, Guy Roy Davis, and and so he makes uh, Guy look pretty bad. And so uh, you know, the next day, the producer, uh, you know, tell, tells. Jack, you know, hey, you were really popular. You should come back on. So he comes back on, he kicks the Reverend off, you know, played by Gary Cole, and, you know, the Reverend's really mad. And so Jack takes phone calls. Like, he's he's really lively with people, but the only thing is, like, he's not spiritual. He's not religious. He's, he's just very blunt with people. So they'd be like, hey, so, you know, one of the questions was like, hey, so what's sinful to eat? And he's just like, I don't know, what do you like to eat? And he's like, I, I don't know. I like a lot of stuff. You think, you think shrimp's sinful? And he's just like, no, I don't think it is. I really like it. So like, he's he's kind of like this sarcastic, like blunt dude. And I really dug his character because ultimately he goes on this road trip, like the bio stated, and he kind of learns a lot within himself. And there's a lot of people that come up to him and they ask, "Do you even believe your own stuff that you're saying?" And you know, we've all been there. We're like your friend will ask you for a, or like a relationship advice or whatever. And they're just like, uh, you know, I, I'm talking to this chick and I don't really know what to do. What would you do? And you would tell them something, but your friend knows that you've never actually tried that. And you actually are completely opposite from that. So it's like, do, do you even try or believe your own stuff that you're saying? But I think this was interesting because 
that's what that's how most motivational speakers are. So I, some of them, I firmly believe they don't believe what they're talking about. They just are very good at persuading people and very good at rising a crowd and stuff. And I, I think that's what Jack's character was all about. And as the movie progresses, he's on this tour. He he finds a lot within himself and stuff, and he he starts to love himself more. And uh, he has some really good like motivational speeches. Uh, for these religious crowds. So it's actually really well written and uh, the directing, like I said, it's just a very good arc for Billy Burke's character. And I'm not going to tell you what happens at the end or what, all the little tidbits in him because I, I want you to find out for yourself. But as far as Billy's character arc is perfect because he's a washed up loser in the beginning and towards the end, like, you know, he, he kind of finds, you know, the love within himself and he kind of, he doesn't really feel spiritual, but he feels a little bit more uh, like he's worthwhile on this earth and stuff. And he just he really wants to live the life that he's got right now, and he wants to live it to the fullest. Because he uh, every time he goes to a seminar or whatever, people are just like, you know, what happens in the afterlife or whatever. And he's like, no, 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 screw that. You should enjoy your life right now. Like you should make your own heaven right here on earth right now. And so even though he wasn't religious, he had some pretty good. Uh, you know, persuasive information to where like you, you could actually sit back even if you weren't religious, you can go, that, that makes a lot of sense. Like this guy's really smart. And it's all, it's all about a perspective thing. And, and that, they actually mention that in the movie. Like there's a, there's a glass on a table and you know, Billy Burke is like, what does that look like to you? And the guy he's talking to is like, it's a glass and he turns it to the side and it's got a handle on it. So he's like, no, it's a mug. He's like, it's, it's all the same information that uh, we're all receiving, but it, you take it in different perspectives. Like each person is going to take everything in a different take. And so I, that, that's what's great about it is that, you know, even if you're not religious or if you're super religious, you can take his information and you can spin it in either, uh, like either way. Uh, it's, just, it's just different perspective. And so that's what I really liked about his character is because he didn't really believe – most of the stuff he was saying until the very end and he felt like he was actually changing people's lives and he was giving people hope because he gives the uh, the notion which i firmly believe that religion is all about giving people comfort and giving people hope and stuff and he's that's what he's doing he's just giving people something to kind of like lessen the blow of the fear of dying and stuff and it i just like i said i just loved his character man like billy burke is a very underrated actor like he really is he just he was so broken in this movie but I, I i could relate to him because he just he was just trying so hard to like just live his life and he doesn't because people in this movie like they worry about the unknown and stuff and they they want to know more about the unknowable and you know he tells him like i'm more at peace when i don't know about that stuff and you know that that's pretty it's powerful dialogue man like it's actually really well written it's really well directed, and I love the story. I love Billy Burke's uh, character arc. Like I said, everyone else does fantastic. But as far as the directing goes, there's a uh, a figure in the movie, and we can we can assume it could be a religious, spiritual thing, or it could be just something in his imagination. But that's what's great about it is that life is all about unknowable stuff. Like we can't know everything as humans because then we will definitely pick sides, and and we kind of just want to be in awe about the magic and stuff about it. And so I think that's what the director was trying to get across. And I really dug that message. So the directing is just it's top notch, great story. It's great writing. I commend you on that, sir. As far as the acting goes, like I said, Billy Burke delivers a very fine performance, especially coming off of those terrible twilight movies. And then Patrick Warburton is always funny. And uh, Gary Cole, like his character, I'm not going to, reveal anything about his character but he he does a very good job and that's another thing like this movie is actually really funny it's got it's funny it's got a lot of heart and it's like oddly inspiring from like the most unlikely hero which was billy burke's character because he's kind of a loser and so i found it like like i said oddly inspiring from this character about what he was saying but i was drawn in and so i that was the magic of uh, his acting i just it was, the acting all around was just fantastic cinematography it was actually shot pretty well. There's a lot of uh, forest scenes. There's a lot of uh, like, like town scenes and stuff. I, I really liked the way it was shot. It was a nice, clean movie. There's really nothing 
uh, too, like, ooh, that was a great shot. Like, you know, it was shot well. Like, the story didn't really need anything extravagant in terms of, like, beautiful cinematography. It just needed to tell a great story, which I think it did. Uh, but it is a nice, clean movie. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, editing this movie is like an hour and 45 minutes. I think it's a very good uh, time length. The only thing I would say wrong about this movie is I felt like it was a, a tad too preachy. And what I mean by that is like, you know, they have these same themes running throughout the entire movie and they hit you in the head with it over and over and over again. Like, I think they bring up uh, like several different characters to Billy Burke's character, like, do you even believe in what you're saying? Like, you know, and then like, you know, he'll say his excuse or whatever and they'll kind of counteract whatever. So it is a tad too preaching in its own dialogue, but that doesn't ruin the experience for me. It just, I just, you know, I, towards the end, I was just like, okay, can we kind of wrap this up a bit? But I was still engaged on what was going on and how the story was going to end, how it was going to conclude, where the characters were going and everything. So I thought the pace and the rhythm was dead on. I think an hour and 45 was like a perfect time length for this movie. So didn't have any problems with that except for, you know, the tad preachy part. So with that being said, it's one of my favorites at the festival. Uh, probably make my top three unless something else can bump it out. I just, I really liked it. It was just, it was nice and surprising. Like I said, it was like qu very quirky and funny. It was very motivational and inspiring, but in an odd way. And then like, it has like a huge amount of heart I was not expecting that. <laughs> like when you hear Billy Burke, Patrick Warburton, and Gary Cole, it's like, oh wow, it's gonna be like a really funny movie. But I mean, it's funny, but like there's just a lot more heart and a lot more substance to it, which I really dug. So I highly recommend this one, guys. Divine Access. Look it up. It's worth a, a checkout, I think. <laughs> um, so you know, if you if, have you seen Divine Access, I don't even know. Comment in the place below my face and let me know uh, if you plan on seeing it. So. Uh, that will do it for this uh, episode, guys. Uh, thanks for watching Real Reviews Live. I'm Chase Lee, and tune in next time for whatever I review next at the Dallas International Film Festival, which I'll have more coming in the later days. All right, let me play my outro music for you guys. All right. Yeah. All right, see you guys later.